Hello, YouTube. Are you new to home automation? Have you been shopping for smart home devices and you keep seeing Zigbee and Z-Wave? I'm sure you've also seen Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but chances are you already know those. So what's with this Zigbee and Z-Wave stuff? Oh, the Zigbee! How do you add that to your home assistant? How do you add devices that use Zigbee or Z-Wave to home assistant? When a device says requires this specific hub, do you really need that hub? Stay tuned as I answer these questions and more. My name's Jeff, welcome to the channel. I'm a longtime IT nerd who loves overcomplicating everything in my house and then figuring out ways to simplify the explanation of those things so that you guys can easily do the same complicated stuff at your house. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, I invite you to join me on my journey to smartify all the things by slapping that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you don't miss a single one of my amazing videos. So you want Zigbee, or maybe you want Z-Wave. But let's back that up a minute. What are Zigbee and Z-Wave? Simply put, they're wireless communication standards, just like Wi-Fi is a wireless communication standard. Z-Wave operates at 908.42 megahertz, while Zigbee operates at 2.4 gigahertz. That one might sound familiar to you. 2.4 gigahertz? Isn't that same frequency as Wi-Fi? For older Wi-Fi devices, it sure is. Newer high-speed versions of Wi-Fi, like Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, work at higher frequencies, but that's a different video. Now, you might be wondering then, won't Zigbee interfere with my Wi-Fi? I've seen claims of that online, but I haven't found that to be the case with my setup. The 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is pretty wide, and there are multiple channels available. Not to mention that any halfway decent Wi-Fi setup will have frequency scanning built in and can change the channels on your APs automatically so as to minimize any interference, whether that's from Zigbee networks or from the neighbors. Some more technical detail about this topic from the Zigbee Standards website. Quote, Zigbee products have access to 16 separate 5 megahertz channels in the 2.4 gigahertz band, several of which do not overlap with US and European versions of Wi-Fi. Zigbee incorporates an IEEE 802.15.4 defined CSMA CA, that's Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Avoidance for the nerds out there, protocol that reduces the probability of interfering with other users. Additionally, Zigbee uses automatic retransmission of data to ensure network robustness." End quote. Now, one difference worth noting is that since the frequency used by Z-Wave is much lower than that of Zigbee, Z-Wave should be able to communicate over a longer distance and be better able to penetrate walls and other obstructions. The easiest way to think of this is if you have both 2.4 gigahertz networks and five gig or six gig networks at home. Have you ever been outside and your phone fell off the 5G or 6G network, but if you connected to the 2.4G network, you still had a good signal? Same thing. So if you're only gonna have one or two devices and they're gonna be far from your radio, that might be a consideration. However, if you're planning to have many devices, that difference becomes much less important. Why? Both Zigbee and Z-Wave create what are called mesh networks with the devices that you add to the network. What's a mesh network? Let's take a look at my old home assistant server. Here's a visualization of the devices on my network. The rectangle in the center is my old Zigbee coordinator, a CONB2. This is what other manufacturers refer to as a hub. You don't need their hub, you need a hub. The circles are devices that cannot act as a repeater. They're usually, though not always, battery powered devices. So what's a repeater? Repeaters are devices that are connected to mains power and will always be powered on. The most common ones are smart outlets. In the diagram here, all the devices are repeaters in the network. And if we zoom into one, sure enough, it's an outlet. Zigbee and Z-Wave devices can connect to these repeaters and their signal will be relayed back to the main hub which is connected to your home assistant server. So how can you add Zigbee and Z-Wave to your home assistant server? First, you'll need a coordinator, also known as a hub. As I mentioned, my old coordinator was a Combi 2 and it worked great. For my new home assistant server though, I chose to go with this Go Control USB stick. Why did I switch? It has both Zigbee and Z-Wave radios in it, and it's available on Amazon for $39. It's a link to that and the other stuff in the description. But that's only nine bucks more than the Combi 2, and the Combi only did Zigbee. The other thing you're gonna need is a long USB extension cable. Also available on Amazon pretty cheap, and again, check the link in the description for that if you need it. There are several reasons for the USB extension. First, 
Not all home assistant devices have the physical room around their ports to plug in some of these larger USB devices. This is typically a problem with Raspberry Pis and the way that some of the cases for those are designed, but you may run into it in other stuff too. The other reason for it is that depending on what you're running HA on, some of the electronics or even other radios built into those devices, like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, can generate enough interference that when the two radios are right next to each other, you'll have difficulties with Z-Wave and Zigbee. Simply moving the radio away from your HA server by a good bit solves this problem. The USB extension I'm using here is 10 feet. I like it because it allows me to get my radio up onto the ceiling and away from the rack of equipment that my home assistant server is in. Plug the USB extension cable into a USB 2.0 port on your home assistant server, then plug in the Go Control stick, then reboot your home assistant server. Go to the integrations page, click add integration. Then type ZHA and click Zigbee Home Automation. Click the Zigbee COM port and click submit. Click create a network, then click finish. Then click configure and then click add device. Then put your device in pairing mode Check the instructions for your device on how to put it in pairing mode. For example, some light bulbs need to be quickly flipped on and off 10 times, other devices you press on the LED, etc. On this Akara contact sensor, there's a small button on the end of it. Simply hold that down until you see it show up in Home Assistant. Note that for the purposes of this video, I did all this on my PC since it's easier to record it and show you, but you can also add devices through the mobile app. That's how I normally do it, since that's much easier than dragging a laptop around the house whenever I want to add a device. Once the device shows up, go ahead and change the name if you want, and then click out of that box, and then click the back button up in the corner. Then, if I click on Devices under the ZHA integration, you'll see the sensor I just added. Next, let's add it to the dashboard and you can see how quickly the state updates take place. Now, this isn't a camera trick or some editing magic. It really is happening that fast. There you go. You just learned how to add a Zigbee or Z-Wave radio and how to add a device. Pretty simple, right? But why would you want Zigbee or Z-Wave? Well, aside from the fact that some devices just aren't available as Wi-Fi devices, there are a lot of benefits by using Zigbee or Z-Wave. For the security conscious out there, since it's not a Wi-Fi device, it doesn't have an IP address and can't communicate with regular PCs or phones or anything else that doesn't have a compatible Zigbee or Z-Wave radio, and that includes the internet. That means that all the Zigbee and Z-Wave devices that are connected to your coordinator are gonna be locally controlled. Next battery life. Wi-Fi uses way more power than Zigbee or Z-Wave. The little contact sensors? The hookup did a great video on contact sensors, and that little Akara one lasted so long that the rig that he designed to test them broke before the battery died. Since Zigbee and Z-Wave devices use so little power, they can use much smaller batteries as well, which leads to much smaller devices. But one of the hazards of having battery powered devices is that you have to monitor the batteries as well as keep some fresh batteries on hand so you can swap them out when you need to. Stay tuned for my next video where I set up my battery monitoring page on my new home assistant server and configure alerts to tell me when I need to replace a battery. Now, the part you've all been waiting for, the giveaway. First, I'm still looking to hear from I am Mike underscore 20 to claim the Amazon Fire 10 tablet and Mr. Roma 70 to claim the Amazon Fire 10 tablet and the wall mount bracket. I'm gonna give them another week or so, and then I'm gonna have to find a creative way of giving those tablets away. So stay tuned in case they don't come forward. Now, I've been promising you guys that when the channel reached a thousand subscribers, I'd have a really kick-ass prize. Well, as you can see, the channel is over a thousand subscribers. This is my first video since then. So here I am with the prize. It's an Odroid N2 Plus with four gig of RAM and 64 gig of eMMC storage preloaded with Home Assistant. Brand new, in the box, with the power supply. So, who's the lucky winner? Whoop! 
Time for a shameless plug first. If you like the work I'm doing here, or if you found this video helpful, or you like my DIY haircut, or you think my t-shirts are funny, or if you're just a really nice person that wants to support the channel, please do me a favor and just flick that like button for me. That tells the almighty YouTube algorithm that this video didn't suck and it should be shown to more people. Thank you so much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, okay. Drum roll, please. And the winner is... David Procaccini3153. Please, leave a comment on this video and then contact me at fasthowtochannel at gmail.com so that I can get this awesome prize shipped out to you. Now, as I've mentioned in all the prior videos, these giveaways are only open to residents of the continental United States. For all my viewers from elsewhere, I apologize. But between different power supplies and export laws with electronics and everything else, it's all just far too complicated. I'll come up with something in the future, though, that'll be open to more folks. As the channel continues to grow, there will be more giveaways, so stay tuned. Now, if David is not in the continental United States, or if I don't hear from him within two weeks of this video being published, I'll draw another winner. You'll all just have to stay tuned and see how that turns out. Do you already use Zigbee or Z-Wave with your home assistant setup? What devices do you use or what devices are you looking to add? What's the favorite one you have or the one you've got your eye on? Tell me all about them in the comments. I really, really do love hearing from you guys. It always makes my day to get a comment about how helpful a video was or when someone gives me an awesome idea or when somebody out there is able to teach me something. Well, I think that's enough excitement and learning for one day, don't you? As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped to demystify Zigbee and Z-Wave, and I hope that I helped show you how easy it is to add these things to your home assistant installation. I hope that you like the way that I present content, and I hope that I earned your subscription. Until next time, go automate something, will you?